My name's Kyle, and I grew up in an orphanage, but I consider myself very lucky. The orphanage was like a big, happy family. I had a lot of friends, and the people who worked there took care of us like we were all their own children. They worked very hard to place us with great families, and many of us actually got out of there and continued to live amazing lives. I got adopted when I was six. At first, I didn't even want to go. I just knew I'd miss all my friends. I cried as my new parents wrestled me out of there. I grabbed one of the pillars outside of the orphanage and didn't let go until the administrator asked me to go with my new family. My friends all cried too. They told me not to forget about them and to write all the time. I did. We all kept in touch throughout our lives. My family wasn't so bad at all. My adoptive mom's name was Sophia, and my dad's name was Peter. For three whole days, I didn't talk to them. I just stayed in my room and refused to touch my food. But eventually, I realized how lucky I was. They were patient and kind and generous. The room they gave me was huge! There was even a game room and a movie room that they set up just for me. As soon as I got there, they took me shopping and bought me so many clothes and toys. When I got sick, they took care of me. Mom and Dad sent me to the most expensive school in the country, and it was there that I found out that not everyone was nice like my parents or the other kids from the orphanage. I was proud of being adopted, but my classmates made fun of me for it. They called me names. They told me that I was left by my parents because I was ugly, and because they didn't love me. I acted out because of that. I started talking back to Mom and Dad. I started blaming them for all the torment I was going through at school. Kyle, we didn't raise you to become like this. You can't talk to your mom like that. My mom? She's not even my real mother. And you're not my real dad, so you can't tell me what to do. Mom sobbed in the corner. She was hurt by my words. And I admit, I felt guilty. But I was so mad that I didn't want to budge. You live under my roof and eat off of my table. So I will tell you what to do. Dad grounded me for a month, and he took away my PlayStation. I was furious at him for that. But when I went back to school, suddenly my tormentors were gone, and my classmates were all nice to me. I still don't know exactly what happened, but I overheard one of the teachers talk about it. They said my dad stormed through the school and demanded to know exactly who was teasing me. Mom and dad found out that my tormentors' parents worked for them. They immediately fired them from their jobs and told them that if their sons ever came near me again, they would sue them. I had never seen my mom and dad angry for real, and it wasn't hard for me to imagine them doing that. But when I found out the lengths they would go to just protect me, I apologized to them and promised that I would be a better son. I finished high school and went on to a business school. Dad wanted me to work for him and one day take over the family business. I graduated with flying colors, and to celebrate my achievement, Mom and Dad bought me my own house and a car. It wasn't anything fancy. Mom and Dad had lots of money, but they kept our lives simple and humble. They taught me how to save money and how to live without excessive luxuries. I started working for Dad's company, and unfortunately, my coworkers didn't like me. They talked behind my back and pretended I was their friend, when the truth was, they all wanted me gone. I wish he'd just make a huge mistake, so the boss won't have a choice but to fire him. Yeah, pretty sure he only got the job because he's the boss's son. We should make sure he fails. At the very end of my first week there, my coworkers dumped all of their work on me. They all just left everything, and the stuff they left me was for a very important merger that was coming up. I stayed up for three whole days just to finish everything. But just as I was about to finish it all, I fell asleep. And when I woke up, it was half past ten. I was two hours late. 
I panicked so much. I didn't even have time to grab a bite or, or change clothes. I just ran to my car and drove like I was flying to the office. And when I finally burst into the conference room, everyone was already on their way out. My dad looked very disappointed in me. Dad! <sighs> dad, it wasn't my fault. Th those guys... <sighs> they made me do all their work! But Dad didn't want to listen. I knew I had to make it right somehow, so I asked for help from everyone I knew from business school. I called them up and asked them if they knew anyone who worked at the other company we were doing the merger with. And luckily enough, there was one. Her name was Stacy, and she and I never really talked much back in university. But now, she was going to help me. With her help, I found out where the CEO of that company was going to be that evening. So before he got there, I made a reservation for the most expensive table there. I met Mr. Gershwin outside the restaurant, and it was such a surprise when I saw that Stacy was with him. It turned out she was his secretary. I treated the CEO to a luxurious dinner as my apology for the merger meeting not having gone to plan. I convinced him to take a look at the materials I had been working on. And by the end of the dinner, Mr. Gershwin was so impressed that he promised me he'd sign the merger documents first thing in the morning. The guys tried to take credit for my work, but Mr. Gershwin told Dad it was my work that impressed him. And so, I got promoted and became an executive. Nobody questioned me being in the company after that. To thank Stacy, I took her out to dinner, and we kinda started dating after that. She was my first girlfriend, so I didn't know what to expect. It was then that I realized maybe Stacy wasn't the kind of girl I should have have dated. She was demanding, and she liked spending too much. I found out that she would always use half her salary just for shopping, there's no wonder she had a lot of debt. And she was always running out of money. She moved into my place and I would drive her to work. I thought if I helped her save on bills, she'd finally be able to pay off her stuff. But no. Stacy only used her extra money for more shopping. When I introduced her to my parents, she behaved horribly. She complained the whole night, making mom and dad feel bad because they didn't take us to a more expensive restaurant. She even had the gall to tell them that she was expecting a gift from them. Wow, you guys are millionaires, but why are you so cheap? Stacy, stop it! Oh, please. You have all this money and you're not using it. Why don't you pay for my credit card? I'll consider it a gift to welcome me into the family. After all, maybe one day I'll say yes to your son if he proposes. And I'll be your daughter-in-law. Stacy, you're embarrassing yourself. Shut up. You're shutting me up? You're just like your parents. You're so stingy and cheap. I can't even convince you to buy me a lousy pair of shoes. Everyone in the restaurant started watching us. Even my parents were starting to get embarrassed by the scene. If you want shoes, Stacy, buy them with your own money. I'm not your sugar daddy. What is the point of having a rich boyfriend if you won't spoil me? You know what? You're right. I'll buy it with my own money. I bet you I'll have a proper sugar daddy in a day. You'll regret saying no to me. You and your cheap family can choke on your cheap salads. She stormed out of there and I never saw her again. Until a few years later. Stacy stared into the window at the fashion on display of a designer brand store. When she saw the expensive price tag, she frowned. Disappointed, she began to walk away. I was wearing tattered clothes and looking at some jackets when we bumped into each other. She didn't recognize me at first, but then she looked me up and down and laughed. Well, look at you. How the mighty have fallen. I guess you got your karma. I bet your company folded and now you're poor. I don't think this store is in your price range, so you better look elsewhere. Just as she finished mocking me, four store clerks came out carrying leather trunks in each hand. Uh, where would you like them delivered, sir? The orphanage on 9 Main Street. Thanks, boys. Here's something for your troubles.
I handed the guys a thousand bucks each, and I saw Stacy's eyes widen in shock. Since we last saw each other, I had worked my way up the company and became the CEO after Dad retired. I lived a simple life, so I wore old clothes. On that day, I was on one of my weekly donation drives for the orphanage I grew up in. I didn't know you were still rich! Can I ask you a favor? Can you lend me fifty grand? I have so much debt. When we broke up, I bought those designer shoes. That was when things spiraled out of control. I lost my job, and I had no way to pay my bills. I had to borrow to pay my debt, and, and now I've been struggling to survive. I just laughed and walked back into my waiting car. <laughs> you always were irresponsible with money. I'm not going to help you, Stacy. It's time you learned your lesson. I stopped and turned around to smile at her. I think you care too much about price ranges, Stacy. You know, if you have to look at the tag, you can't afford it. Stacy stood there with her mouth open as I drove away.